Okay, so now that we're past all that other stuff, I'm gonna make it so that you don't have to search 15 minutes in to go find the videos, if you actually view it, for the two people who view it. Okay, so. Just tell me the number. Number one, is that the one with, uh, or what is it about? Okay, so mean is what? 60? I'm just gonna pull out 74.2, whatever. Okay. Because I don't do the exact problem, because sorry guys. So what else? Uh, the, and you want to see if somebody is over or under three, four point three inches. Got it. That's okay. Just what are they looking for? And um, you SD, so let's do 79.54 and 4.9. Okay, got them. Yep, I made up numbers. Go. And then, and so you're in our expected test, SD6 with the doorway height of 56.40. Doorway height? Okay, so height, H. Later on, we'll find out the percentage. So we're going to find out the percentage you can fit through a door. Of uh, door. And so let's say you're, what is the height of a hobbit hole? Five foot tall. Okay. Let me change these to be more towards my problem. So do 64.2 and 69.4. What so this is the same problem but different things essentially, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking for a z-score. Everyone's favorite, not a totally. So that is going to be x minus mu. Uh, divided by a standard deviation. So let's do the man. Well, I guess I should do women first, but whatever. So we have an x value of 60 inches. And how tall on average women are yeah, of their sample or population. It's how you distinguish different things. It's just, it's sorry, it's like ahead of where you're at. I just automatically do it. So what I always do before I do it is look, on average, before, I didn't put the standard deviation on purpose. On average, is if an average height of 64 inches on average going to hit their head? Yes, right? So I'm going to look for a negative number on these two. Just as a reality check, to make sure I have this done right. Okay? So I'm good. So. I put these in parentheses because I do, and then I divide by standard deviation, and that gives me the z-score. I do the same thing with men. So 69.4 minus, wait, sorry. I'm gonna do it, oh, I'm doing u minus f. I'm doing that backwards. I am sorry. I will fix that in a second. It is not x minus u, it is u minus x. I'm testing. So in this case, it's the height of a hobbit hole. That's okay. That's 
That's, you know, that's a good point. X mu. It's something I normally do and I didn't, I apologize. So X, test value mu is average of population sample, whatever. And this is standard deviation. Oh, okay. So this is our Z values. I have this back up so much. Three, seven months or two. Well, it is that. I do have that best. Well, I did have that right the first time. So I had this wrong. So this is V7. Minus V5. Because on average, people will hit their head. So what we do from here is these are our Z scores. And I will go ahead and put this up, up like on the board here. So you have it, don't worry about this. But you have Z tables. And what you do is you have a Z score of, let's see, what was it? Oh, I need to share. I will change the share screen in a second. So we have 0.976, negative 0.976. So we're going to look on here at, 0 0.9, and we had 7, 6, so like right here. So that gives us a Z score percentage of 16.6-ish percent. So back over here. And let's see, it's norm, zip this, no, I don't want uh, there's a way to do this. The p value, no. Let me Google it because there's a way to do this 100% right. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Norm S test. Okay. Norm dot S dot dist. And I want to do false. Is it false or true? I will figure it out. I think it's true. So we use true, I'm sorry. So this tells us how many people won't. So how many won't. So 16% of women won't hit their head on a hobbit hole. And 2%, 2.7% of men will. And so one minus percent equals one minus answer would give us the percentage who would hit their head, which makes sense. Whenever you're dealing with z-scores, Whenever you get your percentages, you sit back for like half a second. I know it's stress nerve test time. If I have a Z score that is a negative, I, it's at the time light, that is negative. My Z score percentage will be greater than 50%. And the further away you get from that zero on the negatives, the bigger your number is going to be. That it happens. Because what you're doing, Sorry, I'm on people. Is here is your mean. Here is so this was 64. This is 60. You have more people who are going to hit their head. 
because you have all this area here. You have more than 50%, right? So you're gonna have more than 50. So that is why you have that. Because it's gonna be a majority of the people. The bigger the further away, well, it depends. It, it, if you ask how many will hit their head, it's gonna be greater. How many don't hit their head, it's going to be smaller. It just depends on how you ask. And remember, I do the Socrates or the uh, the Socratean seminar or whatever, Socratic seminar. So if you have a question, I will ask a question to get you to the answer. Hey, at least it won't be, don't ask questions. It's one of those people. I hate those people. And I also want to go home sometime, you know, early ish that day because it's Friday. So I will help you as much as I can to get you a good grade and we can all go home and not cry. <laughs> Okay, does that help with that? And yes, I will upload these again, this time with added percentages. But I will always say, hey, think of your question. Does it make sense, which is your percentage? Because that's gonna do more for your correct answer than trying to put in answers. Okay. So 40%. So uh, can I do, let me see if I can do percentage to, yeah. Let me score, yes, that's what I'm looking up right now. Oh, I actually had that. Norm.s. So. Percentage. Z score equals norm dot s dot in will give us your z score. And I can just change my percentage. So oh, it's asking for, it says, how, what are these, are, what would? So, so test value. Well, you want to actually, uh, I'm gonna do math, actual math, sorry. If I could spell X in equation. So Z is equal to X minus mu standard deviation. So, so Z S B equals X minus mu. Let's write it backwards. So that X is equal to Z times the standard deviation plus your mu. Your test value that you would have to be to qualify for this. So if I was to make a hobbit hole, the height for 40% of the people to not hit it for men or women would be, let's do men or women and then men. So for men, for women, I would take this times that plus, oh, didn't let me do that. Yes, yes. Plus, I think that's men. 
this times that plus no plus that. So I take my z-score times the standard deviation and then add my mean. I do the same thing for bonus, really. So what I'm doing is just applying formula, which I know it's hard to see. I wasn't planning on doing math, and I started too late. My z-score times my times my standard deviation plus the mean that I'm dealing with will give me my test value. So, and if I just change this to be like if I wanted to be a very gracious hobbit or a very rich hobbit, I would change that number. It would change everything around it. So. 0.95, you can see how it changes. And when you think about it, we have, what, 79 inch? Even with these numbers, which are not entirely accurate, 99% of men will not hit their head on doors. Which is, by the way, how to figure out how to all to get doors. Because you don't always have, you know, minute bowl. That's really okay. That help, and then you can play around with these numbers or change them to be your thing. Uh, over E eight or nine. So E eight is that. So that's norm s dist e7 and true. And the e9 is just one minus that. That's the only difference between the two. So which is that. And I wish I could really wish you could make the formula bar bigger. Even though I made the screen bigger. It doesn't change that, which really annoys me. Okay, next issue. Oh, the gambling one. Okay, what are they asking you to do? What is what? Probability of what? Probability of what? Three divided by. Uh, okay, one second. It decided it hates me. I dislike Excel for that, by the way. Three over thirty-eight, and it's face ten dollars. So, okay, so three out of 38. Okay, so expected value. Let me get into that. Let me see if I can find one over here. Uh, preview. Does it not let me just look at the questions?
I'm just trying to see if I can find the question so you can, there's a lot of one. Let me see if I can add, change that or not. Does it let you reattempt them? I don't know if I can change it. I mean, looking at all their stuff, I've, I didn't touch the study plan because I don't know what in the world that is. Or here, I don't know. I don't even have a gambling problem. So it's, There's some questions that I had that I just didn't touch this. So the payout for the, so the payout, sorry, I'm trying to get it over here. So you have the expected value of that. Um, So what's three and thirty eight? What's the payout? So next off is forty. Forty. And this is probably the probability of losing the salary. Yeah. So when Lose equals, it's actually just one minus your probability times 10. It's a $10 bet. So net equals that minus. Wait, you have an expected probability of. 0.53 for a 1 in 38. That's not right, but whatever. <laughs> Actually, it might be. Because every time I hear like uh, uh, somebody who's at, who runs those, he says, okay, just give me 53 cents. Wait, is that per dollar? One second. Expected payout is 0 0.53, negative 0.53. Value uh, roulette. Oh, here's one. Yes, yes, yes. P rev, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking up. I don't trust theirs. 35 to one. So equals one divided by 35. So I'm going to go do 
control X, control V. So that's a three pick. This is a one pick. So to win, you get 10 would be 350 times this. And a lose would be one minus that times 10. Wait, that makes no sense. Straight up is 351. Right? Wait, equals ten dollars would be three hundred and fifty times your probability. That makes no sense. Sorry, I, these numbers. So if you went, if I bet ten bucks on a thirty-five to one, I would get three hundred fifty dollars. My chances of getting that, oh, that's not the payout, that's not the odds. Thirty-seven to one. Oh, okay. There we go. Equals Yeah, their numbers are wrong based on roulette, but whatever <laughs> So Which of those is the better payout? Financially would you rather lose 27 cents or six dollars? 27 cents I'd rather lose so what I did to, uh, to figure out what it is, and this is why it was annoying me, I couldn't figure it out, because payouts are not your odds. Because they remove certain things or else the odds are equal and the house doesn't win and the house must win. So this is just the probability. So the probability of an event happening. So this is, I did not mean to do that that big. So this is a three and 38 chance. Oh, that's why. Three and 37 chance. I don't know where they get 38. There's no 38 numbers on a roulette wheel. I know, I'm, but I, it bugs me. I don't, I do problems based on reality, not on fictional stuff. It's like they don't give you a deck of cards with 48 cards which is a pinochle deck, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm autistic, deal with it. Um, so this is the actual probability of a pick three, which is a three and 37 chance versus a pick one. So you have an 8% chance of getting one of those three numbers, but your payout is $3 on average. So even though you will win $40 based off of that bet, your chances of that happening make it so that on average you'll win $3. However, you will lose on average $9. So you are in general, when you subtract your lose from your win, you're going to lose about six bucks. If you bet on one number, on average, you're going to lose 27 cents. So, if you're gonna to go to Vegas and you're already planning on losing money, betting on single numbers and the lowest denomination possible will make it last longer. This is one of those tricks they teach, that some people teach you because eventually you will make break even. And if you're smart, you get a little bit ahead and run away before numbers catch up. But the house always wins, as you can see. And I could actually, they've actually run this. Uh, 
Oh, it is 53 cents. How do I have different numbers? Oh, it's on a $1 bet. That's why. $1 bet versus what I have. It's 0 0.053, 5.3 5 cents. Yeah, so that's what it is. This is off of a $10 bet. So if you have a three to one, which would be not in here. So if it was off of a $1 bet, so this is off $10 bets, the difference. Uh, and I could, I could have actually done this to change it to dollars based off of it, but even then that's $10, changes stuff a little bit, but it's still 27 cents. Um, I guess bet size one. Oh, so ten. One speed, so this would be four times that, and this would be that. And this is sorry, I'm just changing it to make sure it's right. If you happen to get the roulette, payout is 35 to one. Because otherwise it's gonna bug me. I don't know if you guys care, but it's gonna bug, bug me. There you go. And then you can check to see one, wait, why do I have different numbers? That's not right. Between swimming, thirty-seven, thirty-five to one. I get different numbers. Why am I getting different numbers than them? I have half the number. Seven twenty nine. Hmm. I don't know why I have different numbers. I don't know. It should be, it's not, and I don't know why. Um, but even then, it's going to ask you which is the better probability, right? Generally speaking, the best odds in roulette, which if you're gonna do this, I would pull it up, is always going to be, well, nothing. Uh, the worst return is the top line basket, which is negative 0.79. Other than that, the odds are pretty much, the expected value is the same for everything. So bet what you want in that, whatever you want. You're gonna lose the same amount of money every time. Okay. What is this? I remember actually doing this as my second project in my other class. And I basically said, uh, how do you lose the least amount of money or take the most amount of money home if you're given like a $10,000 prize to go spend money in Vegas, but you can't take any of your prize home, only winnings, how do you do it? The answer, by the way, is to make as small as wagers as you humanly possible and let odds play in your favor. And whenever you win, you take that money and you put it somewhere else. See if I was able to run a test, that's my test. It's just that's the question, that's the midterm. How much money would you win? At, how much money out of $10,000 could you actually take home? 
if you couldn't take any of the original ten thousand dollars home, only what you win. Okay, what else? What? <laughs> we gotta we gotta go test this. Except we gotta do a Monte Carlo simulation. So I need ten thousand grants of ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Hey, just think you won't have to pay for hotels from the whole time. <laughs> they got 21 people in the class for you to take like all semester. <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. They'll look at you and just say, uh, go run the program. What else do we have? Yeah, and the, and the expected value, if you get that, I'm sorry, or not the expected value, if you get the, the a poker question, I'm sorry. Uh, we can try and get through it, but if you get the, that, also be prepared for the lotto question. Possibly. If it's evil like that, I will help, and if we both come up to the same answer and it counts as wrong, I will go in and change stuff. Because if I come up with an answer and you come up with the same answer and we're both wrong, well then I think either the computer program is annoying or I was in agreement with you and we could change it. I don't know, Pearson does some weird things. And so does Excel apparently. For acceptance sampling? Uh, acceptance sampling. Acceptance sampling. For three? Yeah. <sighs> oh. That's your binomial distribution breakdown thing. Yes, there is a specific formula. Uh, let me pull it up. Textbook. Apparently they have videos. I don't know how well they are. Uh, So you need it's um I may remember, yes, last week's Friday's and I think Wednesday's power or power Excel sheet had that on there. It's the binomial distribution for a specific event. It is in Excel. If we're having trouble finding it, I can go back and get it again and pull it up real quick before the quiz or I can pull it up if you're doing it. It's there, look for it. Um, but I've gone over that one a couple times. Um, mm -hmm. What? Choose. This is choose. So and choose R. Is it R? Oh, sorry, X, not R. And the probability of an event occurring to be X power. And the problem of the one minus the probability of the event happening to be n minus x power. So this is technically uh, 
and minus x. Ah. So this is the, the n permeations, n minus x permeations, x permeations, nonsense. But like I said, if you have a TI-84 or if you have Excel, you can just do as long as I can see it, it's actually it's a calculator and not actively cheating at the time. I don't care. So you could use that. Choose will do the same thing, I think. I don't know if it's choose or if it's something else. I have it up elsewhere. Actually, I can just pull it up. Open. See if it's on the 10th. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's pick three. Oh, here we go. Binome.dist. So the number of successes. So if you're doing like five out of 20 people were successful. Five, 20, and the probability of that occurring, point, uh, say point 0.3, and then I do, if you are looking for an individual, it is false. If you're trying to build like zero to like one, it's true. So binome.s or binome.dist will give you the same thing as this horrendous for formula. Binome.dist, which is up there. That was in the tenths uh, spreadsheet, already there. No, I do not want to save it because it's just one thing. Okay, are we all in the petered out stage? Okay, everyone who's petered out. Bye, apparently I have to go by doors. That means you guys online can run away. Like I said before, uh, go ahead and print out if you want your uh, midterm review and you can annotate that and bring that in. Athena's in.